Okay, so in this particular video we're going to be looking at exponent rules um, when we're dealing with fractions. So you may have seen this before but not maybe understood what was going on with it, and so we're going to talk about it in detail here. First example that I want to think about is just trying to apply what we already know about exponent rules, that when you're timesing two powers together, or two exponents together, sorry, two terms of p exponents together, you add them. So for instance, a to the power of 3 times a to the power of 3, that becomes a to the power of 6. We've added the powers. So if we take a look at our first example here, a to the power of 1 half times a to the power of 1 half, that does become just a to the power of 1 half plus 1 half, and that in turn is just 1. a to the power of 1 is the same thing as a. So we can see that a to the power of 1 half times a to the power of 1 half is equal to a. So my next question for you is, if I do the square root of a times the square root of a, what do I get? If you're not sure, you get a back. And we can look at that as an example if you want. Square root of 4 times the square root of 4. What's the square root of 4? It's 2. What's the square root of 4 again? It's 2. And 2 times 2 is equal to 4. So effectively, when you're squaring a square root, you get rid of it. And we might remember that, you know, like if you take the square root of 16 and you square it, you do, you get 16 back again because squares and square roots cancel each other. So here we can see that the square root of a times the square root of a gives us back a. And since this is equal to a, and this is also equal to a, you might be making a connection between the idea that a one-half could be the same as a square root, because here I've got a to the power of one-half times a to the power of one-half, and I get a, and here's the square root of a times the square root of a, and I get a. So the exact same answer for both of those. And let me illustrate something else. When we write square roots, we don't often add the two there that's implicit, or it's assumed that it's in there invisibly. So you have these little invisible twos, and what you need to learn, what you need to remember, is that when you have a fractional power, it means the same thing as a root. So our first rule to remember would be that when we have something like x to the power of 1 over a, that is the same thing as the a root of x. And again, as my example here, if we take a look at a to the power of one-third. Well, if it's a one-third power, that means it's going to be a third root. It's going to be a third root of a, because the power of one-third is the same as the third root. Again here, one over a becomes the a root. So how about this? If I say the sixth root of x, if I wanted to write that as a fraction in my index or my power, how would I write that? x to the one sixth, because x to the one-sixth is the same as the sixth root. Taking a look at a more complicated example here, we don't have a 1 on top of this fraction, but we see a to the power of 3 over 4. Now I might, as an illustration for you, think about this, a to the power of 3 times 1 fourth. Okay, so 3 over 4 is the same as 3 times 1 fourth. And we know that one-fourth is a fourth root, so I should probably have a fourth root in there somewhere. But what is that three part? That three part is really just a to the power of three. Um, so when we have a to the power of three-fourth, the top becomes your exponent inside the radical, inside the root there, and this becomes the root or the order of the root, 5th, 6th, 7th, etc. So another, as another example, working backwards from that, if I have the square root of m to the 5th, how can I write that with fractions? Well, first thing I need to remind myself is that if it's a square root, I have that invisible 2. It could be helpful to remember that. So that's the second root, and that means I need a half in there, because I need a half on the bottom to make the second root, or the square root. And that power of 5 here tells me that I'm going to have a fifth, or a 5, on top. So m to the power of 5 over 2. So I'll do one more example like that, just to help reinforce it. So if I gave you x to the power of um, 7 over 4, 
you would say, okay, that's going to make it a fourth root. And that is going to make it x to the 7 inside of the radical. So as a generic rule, we could possibly write for ourselves, you know, x to the power of, what letters do we want to use here? Um, I already got the A, let's do this, B over A, that'll work, x to the power of B over A, so whatever is on top becomes the power inside the radical, and the A on the bottom of that fraction still becomes the power on the root, not the power on the root, but the order of the root, so the fifth root or the seventh root, however you want to look at that. So those are the two main rules to remember with the fractions, and they're equivalent. You can write it as a fraction or you can write it with the root symbol, either way works. Be aware of the word radical, that's often sometimes we talk about roots being radicals as well, same sort of terminology, so don't get too thrown off by that. So again, if you're given an uh, exponent that has a fraction in it, the bottom of that fraction is going to become the order of the root, so the second root or the third root or the fourth root or the fifth root, and if there is not a one on top but actually a number on top, that becomes the power or the exponent on the actual variable under the root. So you'll see they're still tied up in there.